Hey, this is Misery Loves Company, a weekly social reading series hosted by Misery Tourism. Every Friday, we welcome transgressive and outsider writers to come and share their work with us. And it's Friday, so let's get going, motherfucker. Uh-oh, I said fuck within the first eight seconds. Gonna get demonetized here, thanks to YouTube's new uh, new policies. Luckily, we're not monetized at all, so I don't think we have anything to worry about. Anyway, Andy is up first tonight. Oh, shit, I'm up first. All you right. signed up first, man. You signed up last week. That's the unfortunate uh, consequence of signing up early. <laughs> Uh, How's it going, man? Yeah, man. Just uh, just living, living life in this loop. Um, yeah. Let me put something up. Um. All right. This is called "The Fruit Fly Is in a Sentimental Mood." Finish the story. Uh, can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay. After Morgan dipped out, the fruit fly moved into my apartment in Columbia Heights, D.C. to live with me. Today I hung out in the living room and crashed on the sofa in the early afternoon while I was doing office work on my laptop, typing sentences into a Word document. And the fruit fly snored, whistled a bebop jazz tune in its sleep, Whereas I was working on a personal writing project, the first draft, something I've never shown to anyone, not even Morgan. A few times my phone rang, but I was too busy to pick it up. I forgot about it after a while, focusing on my work. I obsessed over my work, labor over it, kept it close with me. When the fruit fly woke up, it flew around in my kitchen and nibbled on the bruise, Bartlett pears from a glass bowl. I smoked a joint on the balcony and watched it suck the juices out the fruit. It looked at me and grinned, blowing me a kiss. I stared at my feet. They were covered in ash. I went inside, closed, closed the sign glass door and looked up. The fruit fly was hovering on the top of the room near a wooden ceiling fan whose panels rotated back and forth like a disc in a CD changer. I wish it would get sliced up by the fan, turned into bits and pieces. Its movements were weaving in and out of the wooden panels that spun around in slow circles. And it landed on the countertop and laid on its stomach, blowing out snot bubbles. I went into the bathroom and sat on the toilet with my sweatpants around my ankles. I was constipated, which made me think that maybe this is why Morgan left me. Maybe I had problems that I couldn't be to solve with designer drugs, meaningless sex, or junk food. I didn't have the answers. All I had was that fruit fly. I washed my hands with hot water and soap and dried myself on a beige bath towel. And when I went back into the living room, the fruit fly was dry humping a plum in my wicker basket. I rushed back to the bathroom and got on my knees, stuck my finger down my throat to peek out my guts. When I stepped back into the living room, the fruit fly was still making love to the plum of passion. It was thrusting back and forth, moaning. I opened the front door and told it to get out. It kept licking the plum, sucking on its fruit, gripping its peel. I cleared my throat and opened the door wider. Get out, I said. It looked at me with its Coke bottle guys and sneered. It spat on its carpet, flipped me off. It called me a prude. It mooned me. I went into the storage closet and grabbed the fly swatter. Then I ran back into the living room, swinging at the fruit fly. I smacked at it, and it launched against the window, sliding down the glass until it hit the ground. I walked over to it, looking down at it. The fruit fly looked up at me, winking as it rolled left on the carpet and dropped between the slits in the air vent. I got on the ground, reached over with my hand, and watched it fall down the dark hole. I stood up and walked over to couch and sat down. My phone started ringing on the coffee table. I was letting go. I curled up against the cushions and stared at the window, looking at the fragment of the construction site. The raindrops were spilling on the concrete. A black cat was purring at the pile of broken planks and steel beams, 
it looked in my direction, or at least I thought I did. I was asleep and dreamt. I dreamt I was lying on the ground, getting hit in the face with my plums, big and small, ripe and rotten. Plums and like hail dropping on me all over, all of them hit me over and over, like tea and tea bag repeatedly in the face. One plum hit me in the eye, and another smacked me on against the chin before a third one hit me out. I blocked out. I woke up on the couch. I was drenched with sweat, my breath swallow, shallow. I went to the bath bedroom, did two lines of ketamine off my phone, and then I smoked a bowl and coughed out my lungs. When I was feeling high, I was stepped back into the living room and giggled. I giggled and giggled and giggled some more. I liked feeling this way, but I sighed and knew it was a problem that I didn't know how to approach and fix. The fruit fly was flipping pancakes in the kitchen, whistling a familiar jazz tune, some bird or Coltrane song. The apartment smelled like chocolate chips and bananas. I pulled up a chair and sat at the long marble island. I was exhausted. I stared at my hands and breathing deeply. I'm sorry I hit you, I said. I really was sorry. I shouldn't have done that, but you couldn't be but you shouldn't be fucking a plum in the common area. Do you know what I mean? Can you understand me? The fruit fly poured orange juice into two glasses and gave me one, and then leaned back against the countertop and drank the juice and clicked its teeth. I get it. I'm sorry. That all happened again, I promise it said. I couldn't believe I was talking to the fruit fly. I didn't think it was actually fully comprehend what I was saying. Maybe I was still just high. And I had imagined its conversation with it. I know I know from my suspension of belief was due to the weed or the K. Why did it matter that much? Appreciate it, I said, shaking hands with it. We're good now, for the moment at least. We sat at the kitchen table, ate the pancakes on paper plates, and drank the orange juice. It was a good cook. Knew its way around the kitchen for sure. It asked me my name. It told me my name was Andrew. Asked it what its name was and it didn't have one nor did I want one, even though I considered it giving it a name. But now I felt that it was strange, like naming a pet or something, which it was not. I told it I've been calling it It, like It, the novel It by Stephen King. My joke made it laugh, but then it afterwards looked down and frowned. And when I realized my mistake, I said, sorry. It told me it didn't really care. We finished eating the pancakes and hung out on the balcony where the wind was blowing, and we vibed to the sounds of the traffic jam on the street below my apartment. We talked about philosophy, auto fiction, social media, our romantic partners, the lack thereof. We liked Emerson and Freud. We loved Sheila Hetty and Bryn Lerner. And we despised Twitter and Instagram. It was a sex fanatic who got dumped by Red Plum a year ago. And I told him I had a girlfriend that I was in love with Morgan. And then we wanted a child named Andrea or Andre. Morgan and I met in the college of Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. She majored in English with concentration in French modernism, and I majored in communications but skipped classes to sell dime bags of weed to the local in the suburbs. I told the fruit fly that the Morgan had left the apartment, that she'd left me because she left me perhaps as well, and when it asked me why, I didn't have an answer for it, because I wasn't sure what the catalyst could have really been, but then I thought about it. And maybe it was because of the drugs often, or maybe it was the gap in my front teeth, the small mole on my left cheek, my lack of color coordination for my outfits, because I like Brussels sprouts steamed instead of fried. Maybe it was because I didn't like to talk very much. That's a lot, dude, the fruit fly said. Sorry you're going through that. I cracked my knuckles. Thanks, man. Questions for me to ask? Where are you from? Chicago. I'm a White Sox fan. I like jazz and the sax. You like jizz and the sax? No, I like jazz and the saxophone at all. I thought about baseball and jazz for a few minutes, then I said, you need to help out with rent. I rubbed my fingertips together in a money gesture, hoping it would understand body language. How, it asked. With money, haven't you ever paid rent, I asked. I was acting ridiculous, but the situation felt ridiculous. So I acted accordingly and shook its head. I'm a fruit fly. It's money. We just had an hour-long conversation about the Topeka school on Twitter. You like baseball, jazz, and you're from Chicago, but you don't know what money is? Humor me, it said. After I explained the concept of money to the fruit fly, I rolled some joints with some papers and mediocre weed. It laughed and told me it knew what money was and it said it liked the fuck with people's heads for pranks. I was a bit irritated, but that didn't help much. It slapped me on the back and smiled. I rolled my eyes and coughed out smoke, passing the joint to the fruit fly, watching it as it did a big hit and making smoke cloud and leaning back in the couch. I grabbed the joint. I took another hit and said, this is a lifestyle. I'm God, though, it said. You good, right? I asked. What, what do you mean? 
I mean, like, like earlier we were in that fight. What fight? I don't remember shit now, fam. Really? It was pretty crazy. I was pretty mad at the fly spotter. Bro, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's get lifted and smoke. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I feel you. I just want to probably say I probably overreacted. It smoked on the joint. The weed turned into a roach, and then it set the roach onto an ashtray and set up straighter, more rare, so it seemed. I don't want to talk about this. You're making me uncomfortable, dude. I nodded. I hung my head and stared at my feet. They were dirty. I'm just trying to be real with you. I'm not a terrible person. At least I, I think I'm not. Can I make it up to you? I thought about it. And I knew it was wrong and I was wrong. But I couldn't admit my mistake when I should show accountability and maturity. I felt broken and felt like a piece of shit. I was being sketchy. And this wasn't the vibes or character I'd wanted to give off. I knew I had to spread decency and I could tell it was wanting to dodge my questions especially when I had almost killed it with a fly swatter. I felt remorse. I'm owning up to this, man. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I really am. I should have tried to kill you. When I looked up, I saw the fruit fly was gone. And then I heard a jazz song playing loudly with a severe quality. Layered with a chorus from the saxophone. It sounded lovely. I got up and went to the balcony. The fruit fly was leaning against the railing playing the saxophone. And maybe I had expected it to sound poorly at first, but it didn't play awkwardly at all. In fact, the melody sounded coherent and full of depth. It reminded me of eating apple pie with vanilla cream. It reminded me of eat, seeing the steak grill and seeing the steam rise up. It played between the notes with the crispy honey-like harmony. It played with a slightly sharp intonation, more full intensity, and a swift mobile investigation of chords. Sounds good, man. Damn, my girlfriend would love to hear you play. She's a big Coltrane fan. It looked at me, grinning. What's your girlfriend's name? Morgan, she's dope. I love her. I did love Morgan. Hey, can you play another song? Really? Yeah, I'm here for it. The Fruit Fly picked up the saxophone and started playing again. This time I didn't miss a single note. When I see something, I think you'll like it. I've been working on this thing for a minute. What is it? A surprise. Oh, man, I'm nervous now. Don't be. It's cool. Promise, if you say so. I let the fruit fly away from the balcony and brought it to my bedroom. I shut the door and walked to my closet and opened the doors. I moved aside the clothes hangers, the shoe boxes, and my suitcases, and I slammed my foot against the hardwood floor. I crouched and felt against the wind panels. It hit my foot against them one by one until I heard a hollow noise. I lifted up the wind, fake wind panel with a crowbar that I found in my closet. Then I picked up the wooden panel. I found the secret passageway and showed it to the fruit fly. Follow me, dude. I said, climbing down the passageway, which is which was a long, dark well. The fruit fly followed me and we traveled down the dark well for a good six minutes. And then when we reached the bottom of it, I went to the side and flipped on a light switch. Bright light flooded the well. In the center, there was a small wooden desk, a chair, a typewriter, along with a stack of manuscript papers. I walked over to the desk and pulled out the chair. Take a seat, why don't you? I said, and sat down. Scary. Don't be. It's just something I built a few months ago. My own little man cave, basically. I handed the first page of the manuscript. What is this? I asked, looking the page up and down. It's my novel, the first draft. It started to smile, then it held my name manuscript and read the first paragraph. It's shit. I smiled. All right, that's it. <laughs> That ending is new, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I love, I love the ending. I love. I think that I think you've got it. I think you finally got the perfect ending for this piece because thanks. it. it <clears throat> you spend this whole piece developing this incredible intimate relationship between this guy and the and this fruit fly, and I don't know how much I might be repeat, repeating myself because you've read this story before and I've talked about how much I like it before, but. I love the way that the whole emotional arc of this piece is fucking incredible because it starts off absurd and you never fully back away from the absurdity. You lean into the absurdity and then you lean into the absurdity. And then somehow by leaning into the absurdity, it, this circular thing happens where it ceases to be absurd and it becomes really like human and really real and really like emotionally serious and and meaningful without ever ceasing to be funny and then so that like the end feels like the ultimate capstone to because it, it kind of hits both of those notes right in some ways this is the most intimate that 
the narrator could possibly be with the fly because he's really showing the fly something of himself, like showing him his art. And on the other hand, the absurdity is still there because the fly is like, <laughs> it's shit. You know, it's just so good. It's It snaps right back. I don't know. It's just a great piece, Andy. And I think it feels, I think it's done now. I think this is, as you said at the top, I think this is like, it feels complete. Feels like it. Thank you. I've been working on it for a few years and I just want to, I don't know, just with every iteration, I just like added more, cut more, and just like it's like a dance kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think this was the first thing you read at Misery Loves Company, if I remember. Yeah, like a while ago. Maybe back in 2020 <laughs> or 2021. <laughs> the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, That's thanks, cool. Andy. Um, Appreciate it. Jeff is up next. All right. Uh, let me just see if I can put the link in it. Chat. I just put it in the chat, I think. Okay. Thank you, William. Mm -hmm. um, so this poem uh, is kind of a training for like, you know, fire personnel, grocers, um, therapists, doctors, and uh, probably would come to you in your your email uh so this is for change copyright the leading continuing education training providers for the 21st century presents toxic 4chan culture connecting with young clients in the age of influencers 4chan bullying and delayed adulthood for many of us our young clients have grown up in a social media age that just didn't exist for us. Kids these days are uniquely vulnerable to the mental health problems that come from influencer culture, 4chan, celebrities' flashy lives, cyberbullying, and reality TV. It's no secret that this can lead to young clients to view their therapist as cringe or having less legitimacy than TikTok stars. Our young clients fall prey to increased depression, anxiety, shame, poor body image, and self-esteem and Nazism. These problems are preventing some from meeting the demands of adulthood. In this course, you'll learn a comprehensive set of durable skills young clients need, so-called kings can take through adulthood concentrating orgone exercises to help clients reframe negative self-talk and improve critical thinking orgiastic potency and mindfulness exercises to combat addiction to short-term gratification eliminate harmful dr google and web md depictions of mental health while asserting your state-approved professionalism. Post-nut clarity-based self-regulation strategies to manage overstimulation. Help your clients escape toxic 4chan and 8chan culture and move them towards a rewarding, meaningful adulthood. Toxic 4chan culture. Connect with young clients in the age of influencers, only fans, social media, bullying, and delayed adulthood. $817.92 value. Own it for $149.99. Get free printable worksheets, exercises, activities, and more to give sessions more structure and make therapy easier. Plus, earn up to 20.0 continuing education hours included in the course tuition. What's inside the course? Strategies for eating disorders, body dysmorphia, and other maladaptive behaviors. 50 plus 4chan deprogramming activities, exercises, free printable 4chan copyright worksheets, and more to make psychoanalysis easier. Techniques to work with challenges unique to Gen Y, Gen Z, millennials, wig nats, groypers, nat socks, bread tubers, and confronting challenging clients. 
skills to make your clients set boundaries, develop assertiveness, and manage basic toxic behaviors, including Nazism, e-girl abuse, gaslighting, narcissism, and emotional abuse. Skills to develop professional style and be sure you have enough riz to work with clients of a younger generation. Gain a specific skill set to help you navigate the impact of 4chan culture. Start by learning evidence-based strategies to help your groypers detox from 4chan. Then learn techniques that will move these wignats from the toxicity of their discords into the responsibility of wagey adulthood. FBI, EBT, CIA, OMG, and other approaches to combat 4chan culture. Richard Spencer, PhD, MSW, LCSW, RY, 12,000, CH, CCA, TP, SSRI, DUI, OMG. Click here for information about Richard Spencer, PhD, MSW, LS, LCSW, RY, 12,000, CH, CCA, P, SSRI, DUI, OMG. In this first module, you'll get training to understand the impact of 4chan influencer culture on your young adult, your young client's mental health, as well as evidence-based strategies to begin treatment. Number one, the gatekeeper, critical thinking, CT. Why is CT important in this client session? A milgram, a milgramian approach. Assessing your client's ability to think critically, touching grass technique for change copyright impact of reality tv rtv social media sm and frog culture roman salute on ct impact of decreased ct in equity based education how to live unpaused in a paused world overall impact for chan daily usage developing brain Teenage attention span or lack thereof, emotional centers of the brain, cooming and dooming, increased hypervigilance from constant nat sock arousal, anxiety, depression, insomnia, addiction, extremely online support, decreased self esteem and self image, becoming one of our guys, biological reasons for coom brain and porn addiction, case study. Steve study, 18 year old, excessive brain fog, vision issues. Next, help clients do the weeds of real versus virtual, discerning between real and virtual reality, grounding lessons, orgone interventions, understand the importance of perspective of clients on Kratom. Hold authority while restructuring cognitions, how to BTFO the client. Assert your professionalism without alienating clients. Enforce misappointment fees. Case study: twenty-one-year-old self-diagnosed bipolar, uh, yeah, borderline personality disorder. She's taken an online test and had symptoms of e-girl personality. Prepackaged diagnosis and watering down of therapy. Eliminate harmful and accurate depictions of disorders. You are not a spurg. How TikTok and Twitter decrease intelligence and harm the legitimacy of therapy. Distort effects, narrowing perspectives, accepting butt stuff. Case study, Sandra's story, 19-year-old. The e-girl who came to the intake session with her own diagnosis because she read it online. Next, durable interventions to increase critical thinking, psychoanalysis, readiness to confront one's shadow, examining. Model interventions, THC, LSD, and the Jack Daniels technique for change copyright. Assessing, help clients connect prenatal behavior to the new information from ancestry. Discernment, change thought patterns, create poetry. Specific skill, set, skill sets to target groypers. Relearn relationship with psychoanalysis and other mediums. Anxiety and depression restrict. Reduction for those with compromised diet and exercise, strategies for eating disorder, body dysmorphia, and more. In the second module, you'll build upon your skills and understanding 
of the impact of 4chan by gaining specific training on how to move these youth into meaningful adulthood. When 45 looks more like 18, origins of extended adolescence, psychoanalytical implications for a, quote, fucked up childhood, plugged in but disconnected, the loneliest soy jack, short-term gratification for the dopamine-dependent brains on Adderall, gender, race, privilege, and other Zogbot influencers. <laughs> it's a play of technology, society, and educational stressors. Virtual reality is their fucking reality. Reaching adolescents and their families, tips for rapport building with Patriot Front. Mindfully managing alcoholic parental involvement, building working alliances without alignments, skip ad, cultivate discrimination, domination, and bypass resistance. Modifying the clinical interview, what change, model openness and flexibility, cucking 101. <laughs> Distinguish between psychopathology and generational differences. Precursors to disorders, Mr. Bond syndrome. Navigate more complex identity exploration and confusion. Differentiate oppositional behavior from healthy Antifa identity expression. Clinical strategies for clients struggling with anxiety, social OCD panic. Promote quote unquote real interaction in a virtual world, cognitive dissonance. Encourage boredom by reducing device dependent behavior. Neutralize perfectionistic worry to combat outcome certainty. Reduce fears around healthy risk taking. Whoops. Depression. Dealing with the fallout of social media and cyber harassment. Reframe devaluing self-talk from negative online comparison. Mood management and preventing isolation. Reduce desensitization views. Desensitized views of self-harming thoughts, behaviors, ADHD, boundaries to reduce impulsivity and consequences, device management to reduce distraction, self-structuring for time blindness, NPC no more. Slonking eggs for better follow through, autism spectrum disorder and neurodiversity, social coaching to reduce spurging stress, Brain-based self-regulation strategies to manage sexual understimulation. Groom a self-view around gender identity and sexuality. Healthy routines to promote friendship, productivity, and supremacy. Act now. $817.90 value. Own it for $149.99. Contact us at 4 change on Twitter. 4 change 2023 on TikTok, 4 change 4chan Jeff, so do I just give you my credit card number now or drop it in the chat, man? Oh man, this is fucking brilliant, man. I love this. This is like the perfect satire of this sort of phenomenon too, because it shows you just how irreconcilable these two worldviews are, right? Just how completely ill-suited the language of therapy and psychology is to dealing with the problems of the extremely online individual. And I love all of the terminology here. I love how you mix like therapeutic and, and psychoanalytic terminology with like deep online 4chan terminology and wa and watching those two like distinct jargon filled vocabularies bounce off of each other i think is one of the primary joys of this thing man and it's 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 scathing and it's wonderful and it's scathing in a way that that seems like a satire both of like you know this 
therapy guided uh, approach to reality and of like you know deep online psychosis and i think that that's great because like it could have ended up in a place where it was like only one or the other and i and i think you like walk that type rope tight rope excuse me really well in this piece anyway i it was very funny man Danke, Shane, man thank you yeah yeah uh first of all um six six eight eight zero zero two seven three nine eight seven two four eight seven expiration date uh ten twenty one <laughs> no I, I I fucking love this because and this is too real. This is like as someone who works for the right? people that you know so I've sat through therapy from these people and also I get my paycheck from them too. So I've sat through both their HR department spiels and a therapist there. <laughs> this is like a merger of like, ugh, it's it's just, it's this is too real. This could actually be some kind of booklet or something handed out to some HR goon in like the year 20 whatever. <laughs> and it's, uh, I really like, there's a line in here. Um, I think it's the one about, I put it in the chat here. Uh, it's the cognitive dissonance line. That one is really like just so over the top, like basically in your face. Yeah, that's that's actually how it is. Like the the online world versus the re, you know it in injecting or interjecting elements of the online world into the real world, you know, and the, putting that like just the ridiculousness of writing that in print, you know, like writing that, but in 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 this HR like um you know training thing it's man it's just so good i love it yeah and hate it at the same time because it's too real <laughs> uh, thanks rudy yeah i contemplated reading just verbatim the actual thing that was emailed to me which is equally mm -hmm. it's insane but uh i goosed it up a little bit but uh i'm glad you did i'm glad you <laughs> yeah. did because i think you you turned the banal into art right man oh yeah also i like the picture yeah, yeah, it's a great the, picture. The Chad, yeah. That's the psycholo Chad or something. Psycholo Chad. <laughs> He's got a PhD in DWI, like uh, DG or someone had said, yeah. <laughs> or I think uh, Ryan said, <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jeff. That was great. And Rudy, don't yeah. your mic. You're up next. All right. So I'm going to read uh, some poetry. Uh yeah. So I'm not sure if uh I put the link in there. I did I put the link in there? Okay. Cool. Yeah, I put it in the chat. Cool, cool. So um this poetry, uh this miniature poetry collection is about guns or something. I'm not really sure what uh what it's really about. But let me get to my other screen here in just a second. I have to unfuck my computer because my cell phone uh, cracked today, so it's dead. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, first one is called uh, Threats and Promises. And this is a picture of Texas Mattress Man, the famous, the infamous, the number one, the only one, uh, the last free man in Texas. Threats and Promises. I ain't threatening shit. You walked out that fucking door. You just did. Fuck you, faggot. Fuck you, cocksucker. Give me that gun. You come within three foot of me, I'm going to kill you. Okay. You're not going to shoot my husband. This next one is called Siga Own. Um, yeah, it's about... Uh, so well, you'll see in the next picture down if you scroll down. But basically, the Buffalo Shopping Center shooter dude... Um, he wrote all this shit on his gun, and this is a poetry. This is poetry written with that shit that he wrote on his gun. <laughs> 2083. Britton Tarrant, Dylan Roof, Robert Bowers. Shit. Monkey Baboon Nigger. Pew pew. Black bros, I don't feel so good. Here's your reparations. Yep, it's fixed. Uh, this next one is called 
J.R.R. Tolkien comments on the racist language written on the Buffalo shooter's gun, but he sounds like Michael Bates in a clockwork orange because I have a strange bigoted view of British people. <clears throat> How very crude and slovenly, God save the Queen. I believe any imbecile who would write such bill on a perfectly good firearm should be stood up in front of one. When I conceived the black speech, the language of orcs and occasionally foul creatures, I had in my mind to imitate the nuances of mental troglodytes and purveyors of perverse cants, those butchers of diction and their way of slowly eroding meaningful m meeting <laughs> with terse brutish dialect. I can only wonder at the horrors present in this young lad's psyche. Additionally, I should like to hope that such a weapon, itself an orcish contraption of fell design, is sensibly removed by Almighty God from all existence, and that such a lad would have to face down the demons of his own conjuring with sword, club, or spear. Right. Now this last one, uh, that's a picture of Big the Cat from that queer Sonic game that everybody likes, but it's really stupid. Uh, this is called <laughs> Like a Black Cat Do. A broad-shouldered black Democrat named Jigaboo Jones runs for office in the state of Alabama on a platform of sensible gun control, which is one of those Sonic the Hedgehog platforms that breaks when you step on it. He is black, but a good old boy, black redneck, animation frame, whole platform. He plays Leonard's Saturday night special at his campaign rally, animation frame, some cracks showing. He shows his guns at the rally, animation frame, lots of cracks. His Vietnam rec war record is immaculate, except for the fact he calls his Vietnamese wife his war bride. Tommy Crazy War Brides, War Brides! Animation frame, totally fragmented. Fuck, the punji pit. And that's it. <laughs> Man, that was an immaculate recreation of that sound effect. I <laughs> I've heard it so many times. It's <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, these are all very funny. I love the the kind of most recent arc with your poems, where they're like very direct and very coarse and very nasty. But just I don't know. It's it's a it's very different from some of your early poetry, which is very layered, which is still really obscene, but very layered in this obscenity. It's obscenity, whereas this really feels <laughs> like just like screaming obscenities at some, like really just like putting it out there in a way that's very confrontational. And I appreciate that. And I think that that it works well with your voice. And I have to say, the fucking J.R.R. Tolkien one slew me. Like, everything about that. Because it's it's true to the way he thought about the world. And of course, it's also, like, totally out of sync with anything resembling real experienced reality. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but no, these are all very funny. Cool, thanks. Yeah, um... Yeah, guns are bad, I guess. Or wait, no. Guns are good. Wait, no. Wait, no. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me read. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for reading. Um so I got a DM from Adam and he he rescheduled to next week. Uh so I um Durbin, did you still want to read? Yeah, I can probably do that. Awesome. And if we'll have a little bit of time here, so if anyone has a piece that they'd like to read after Durbin, just say something in the chat. Give me a second here. Sure. Yeah. I don't believe I've read any of these before. So, all right. Uh, 
This is titled Grunt Country. The heart of this great nation, test market supreme, drug abandoned, abandonment complexes, complexes upon complexes ruining our complexions. We've extruded a perfect pigskin heaven for a hoggy soul. Mumble squeak corpo cunt puffed up and landed in the middle of grunt country. Now we've gone to market. Tick, tick, only a minute before the fat and rust overtake us. Cloud wreaths bloom, home of the bleak and pasties, grown in batches, stubby fingered and puss humped. Who nailed the you are here sign to the stump? The sun also rises in the east before we eat it, being so drunk, hungry, and bloat thirsty, and we fart it out for the west to co op. How we love to hate it here. How we love and hate it here. DTF with the cheap and cheesy, skanky and sleazy, while piercing an angry red thermometer through the rest of the country's constipated bitch wrinkle. Innocent people live, sorry, innocent people leave here to become mega famous. Heinous people stay here and become infants. We got waves coming and getting the fuck out. We got stars in our woodwork and paneling over our stars. Notice how often Ohio's referenced in the national media, TV shows, movies. We like our attention. We have football stadium-sized ego and Mr. Magoo-type vision. But the attention, good, bad, and fugly, why, we're positively whores for it. We, we're the pillhead revolutionaries, the dot-com despots, and microbrew magnets. How can we possibly lose any looser? Ohio, Ohio, human, humid cleft of ignorant rednecks wrestling equally bereft big city thinkers and other corporate one point oinkers in never ending matches of spiraling moral turpitude. Pill mills and fentanyl, strip malls and truck malls, warehouses and human mouses, we got them in fades. We got piggy squat women that look like canned hams, shaking it to the best damn band in the land. Bless us, every bro and hoe, with a pharmaceutical glow. This is our glacial legacy. Range Rover, Range Rover, let your dumbass come over. Spread your seed, inflate your football, and thrive. A guinea pig among guinea pigs. A tosser among men. Rock this buggy. Big money ahead. Here. Bear with me a moment. Mr. White son of a bitch gets hard. Fuel my destiny with a bang. The injectables aren't running the show, I swear. A blue nipple in the crosshairs, and I literally mean bang. Aim for the steroid blue nipples through all the ripples and feathers over the striations. And me without my MAC-10. One year, tripping my balls off, Arnold Schwarzenegger almost knocked me over as he was being rushed by a team of meats through the crowd toward the arena. The words lantern-jawed wonder broke flashed through my mind. He was a head shorter than me and looked like heat miser. I thought, you ain't all that. Then I remembered who I was. And despite that, I still could have expunged him and two of his best from any star man. He was less than an arm's length from me. I blew my fatal attraction fantasies into his stiffened hair as he swept by. He smelled like baby toys. Steroidal behavior clutch and stomp we're all fully in control of ourselves here, clean and jerk. Walking through the convention center, there are signs from sponsors, energy drinks, the military industrial complex, the Marines and gays are in heavy rotational recruitment. Suck and blow, steal the show. Vanity, thy name is CrossFit. Orange people united. Look at all these horrors. 
over them through shredded muscle and chipped bone, as they were meant to be fetishized, consumed with broken teeth and blistered eyes. On the lookout for my favorite porn stars and YouTube meatheads, sweatpants and yoga pants and BPL for every taste, I got my hypodermic and duct tape in my backpack. My nerves are dead, so I'm calm. Flatline calm. Lie detector stumping calm. Getting a testosterone contact high. Even the chicks have dicks here. Steroids increase clit size. Fact. The mushrooms are surging, probably due to loading myself up on carbs and simple sugars. Trying to hang out, unobtrusive, that's easy. Dudes are rubbing bronzer on each other, not gay, seriously. The CFE's walking a bomb sniffing dog around. Good thing it can't smell syringes. Slipping into the restroom at the far end of the concourse. Pentobarbital to cure what ails me. Put you into my photographic livery. Baby, baby, I have my greatest defense yet at the ready. They'll find a buff husk crumpled in the stall. Just my little secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got pics on my phone from every angle of match before and after shots. Catching the number five back down fifth, I'm not thinking. It's more like pictures of where I'm going. The bathhouse is going to be busy, always is with the cult of body worshippers filling this town's gaping vacancies between social atrocities. Emptying myself out further, I intend to assist in that effort. I intend to wash myself entirely clean. I intend to take someone with. I can wait in this humid envelope forever because I'm a reptile using dormancy and natural selection to dodge perception and alter the future. I match the leaves, the wallpaper. I'm blending into the crowd, melting into your blind spots. I've slowed my pulse and heart rate to the brink. It's easy to get lost in this nowhere, trying to be somewhere town in the classic, during the classic. I used to get lost here all the time, but I've found my callings. I croak a message into my storied hand. I place my hand down my pants and grab my gun. The message scarred onto my palm from years of scratching, whispering, digging. My finger traces the outline of the gun, oil dripping from the barrel. I taste it. Yep, gun oil. I lick the scars on my hand like I'm tracing a treasure trail on a map of my tongue. I like the way all of this tastes. The flavor of freedom, the bouquet of certitude. Point and click. One click changes everything. Easy as ein, zwei, dry. That's it. First of all, sorry, because my mom's dog is barking loudly, and I'm not sure if you can hear him, but Durbin, that was fantastic. I love the way you write, and I love the way you perform the pieces that you wrote. And both of these pieces come across almost as a kind of apocalyptic sermon about American disintegration and despair, and I... And I love all the little turns of phrase here. In the Schwarzenegger one, the phrase testosterone contact high. Oh, my God. And the Range Rover, Range Rover, Red Rover, Red Rover wordplay in the first one. There are so many amazing little rhetorical flourishes here that make the piece pop, especially when read. These pieces feel like they're written to be read, like sermons, you know, like monologues and... And yeah, man, you, your delivery is on point every fucking time. This is really good shit. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, William. Mm -hmm. So uh, did anyone else have anything they wanted to read? Rudy, do you see anything in the chat? I don't see anything no. in the chat. Oh, okay. Go and what? We can um, we can shut her down early and uh, move on to the, the quote-unquote after party, I guess. But I'll... Uh, Going once, going twice, 
Okay, we'll call it here. So uh, anyway, thank you to everyone who read tonight. Um, it's kind of Memorial Day weekend, so I was thinking maybe nobody would show up at all, but we actually had a pretty good turnout and we had some really amazing pieces. Uh, so thank you to everyone who read. Uh, thank you to everyone who came and listened. And um, yeah, we do this every Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific. We uh, tweet out the link right before from our Twitter account at Misery Tourism. Anyone is welcome to come and read. Anyone is welcome to come and just hang out if you're not a troll. If you're a troll, we'll throw you the fuck out because I don't care <laughs> anymore. But otherwise, I, you're welcome. Um, I think you forgot to say thank you to the Spartan soldiers who died so that we could um, <laughs> we could read offensive dick poetry and shit. And barbecue, yeah. right? And barbecue, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, Spartans. <laughs> no one out forget. for the Spartans here. Never forget. <laughs> All right, fuck it. That's it. Thank you, guys.